Are the interest rate hikes going to cause the real estate market to crash? What do the liberal housing plan implementations mean for the state of the real estate industry? If you're a buyer, a seller, or a real estate agent, you're going to want to pay attention because in this video, I'm going to address a lot of those topics. I'm going to give you some insights into what's actually happening boots on the ground in the marketplace. If it's your first time to this channel, my name is Justin Conical, one of the owners of Prime Real Estate with my beautiful wife, Shannon. We cover the whole southwestern pocket of Ontario, Canada. Home base is London, Ontario, but we are Port Stanley to Grand Bend, Kitchener to Sarnia. We got lots of people in all the markets and people just like you are calling us every single day on this channel to find out the best neighborhoods to live in and get access to off-market deals. That's where this happens. Just make sure you hit the bell and subscription button so you don't miss any future episodes. We try and put a ton of effort into our market updates just to keep you dialed in, right? No fridge magnets, no calendars. If you want to work with me, great. If you don't, that is okay. We just want you to be well prepared and equipped. And I reach out to people much smarter than me quite often to get information as to what's happening. So you are getting it from the source, not just telling you to buy property for the sake of buying property. We want you to make good moves and we want to put people before profits. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you guys a couple of things first before we get into the topics that I discussed. And I'm going to show you our last market update. So our March newsletter would have had the February statistics for the four primary markets that we cover, which is London, Elgin, St. Thomas, Sarnia, Lambton area, and everything between. And then here's the stats we're about to put out. Now, if you want access to this newsletter, just email me info at primebrokerage.ca or click in the description below. We're about to send the new one out. This video will be featured in it. So hi, if you're seeing the newsletter again, um, but that's where we put a lot of this information. We give people first access, but look at these stats, right? I'm looking at last month's the London area average price point was 825 and it's 823. Now it's lower than it was last month. And I'm looking at the number of listings. We're about 1500. Last month was about a thousand sales activity. There were more sales. Months of inventory is up 0.1. So from 0.5 to 0.6 months of inventory means if we stop selling properties in about 15 to 17 days, we're going to be out of inventory. Average days on market seven days. Let's go over to Elgin. Elgin's 888. It jumped 70,000 from 819. Oh, wait a second, it dropped the average price. Oh my goodness, there is an indication. It's up last year 18.6% from 2021. But last month before that in February, the jump in value was 51%. So my buddy Jazz Takar said this the other day, and it was so insightful. It's like going 200 miles an hour and then slowing down to 150 miles an hour. You're still going 150 miles an hour, but it's not like it was in February. So public perception is, oh my gosh, everything's coming to an end. Meanwhile, that growth is still happening. You're seeing 46 new listings compared to 27 last month, 33 sales versus 22. You're seeing 0.8 months of inventory. That's the same. And you're actually seeing less days on market in St. Thomas than you were the month before. Now, if I look at St. Thomas to St. Thomas, so that was Elgin County as a whole. St. Thomas was 731, dropped to about 728. So normalized a bit there. More listings on market, definitely more sales. The inventory is the same. Days on market's the same. Sarnia Lambton was 589, 154, dropped to 562, 202, 233 new listings. Again, you're looking at 153 sales versus 122. So more sales happening, about a half months of inventory and about eight, month, eight months on market. Now, I'm going to go to one more data set for you guys because I think this is super helpful. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of break down my opinion on what I just showed you. A lot of people are wondering, why did that happen? Why were there more sales? Prices weren't as increased as they were the month before. It's exactly what we're going to talk about. The conversation around rate hikes for sure was one of the reasons why the markets shifted a bit and the buyer demand maybe slowed down a little bit. The increased inventory, there was more options for buyers. So buyers weren't as pressured, right? Anybody that knows the market January till March, it was mayhem. You were how many dollars over asking price? How many houses did you lose? We were all exhausted. Nobody wanted to actually work in a market like that, but we were going to war for our clients and doing what we had to do. Now we're in a marketplace where I think everybody is looking for a little bit more balancing and understanding where it's going. The uncertainty of the market is why we're shooting this video right now to make sure that we're dialing you in on these stats and understanding what's actually happening so we don't just make emotional decisions based off news articles because the news is made to help. There's, the news is made to make you click not to necessarily give you the most insightful information and help you make the right purchasing decision. It's literally just trying to get you emotional. So you react, so you click and then have a convert or an actual conversion. So now let me go back to this stat here. I'm going to share this screen. So this stat here is the average sales price and I've got all four markets. I've got ITSO, which is the entire board. 
I've got London, Lantern Shores, and Sarnia. So you're seeing the sales price is all over the map, right? As of January 2021 to today, you see Sarnia has increased, dropped down a little bit, increased, increased. And then on the upswing, you're seeing Lambton Shores increase, 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 and then dropped off sharply. That's more of an indication of the average price point of homes that are selling because you're going to have a very big gap between the different styles of homes. And if no sales are happening, which not many sales actually did happen February to March in Lambton Shores area, you're going to see that drop off. And then London, you see that jump right up until February and you're seeing a small stabilization until March. So if you're looking to list your property, maybe you are adjusting your price about 5% from your expectations. Don't just rush your house to the market thinking that you can get those February prices. You want to be very, very thoughtful about your strategy, how you price your property, how you market, how you negotiate. That's how you're going to sell your house. I would literally teach you to sell your house for free just so you're equipped because I don't want to see anybody lose any money. But strategy is literally everything. New listings on market. This is really, really telling. This shows you it. So look at this. This is the entire board, you know, Call it London had 286 listings back in December. London now is 1,000. Lambton Shores had one, now it's at six. Sarnia had five, now it's at 20. So this should give you an indication of the inventory levels and why things are going where it's going. The actual sales volume, days on market. This is pretty interesting. You saw the days on market spike in January in the Lambton Shores area, that could have just been one or two listings that were on the market for a longer period of time and there was no inventory, it's skewed days on market, but it seems like it's still fairly like seven days on market. You're looking at about a week um, for your average listing that's priced at a price that it should actually sell. So hopefully that's insightful in terms of giving you some data as to what's happening in the marketplace. We can get into some percentage of original price and list price and all that jazz. If you want that info, you just let me know and I'll get into it anytime you want. Just want to give you a really high snapshot. Um, if you watched the last couple of market updates, we forecasted this, right? I talked about how we were going to see a market that was nuts from January till about March. The inventories were going to level out in April, May. We were going to probably have a more stable summer, which it seems like we're going to, and then be going into a crazy fall. Now, let me go through the rate hikes, liberal plan conversation. I'm not going to go too in depth into it, but I'm going to give you my thoughts today. They are going to change every single day because I'm networking with top people across the country to make sure I am equipped and make sure my clients are equipped to capitalize in the marketplace and be the best person I can be because that's literally my job. Um, we did do a panel discussion on the Prime Real Estate Mastermind. Again, if you're part of the Prime Insiders list, you get first access to those private events. We hosted it on the weekend. We had lawyers, mortgage lenders. We had people from all walks of life, differing opinions, talking about this in depth. So I'll link that in the video or maybe put a card on YouTube if I could figure that out. Um, or you can just click below and then get access to those events. So the rate hikes, the consensus truly is we're still in a place where rates are insanely affordable right? Compared to where rates have been historically. Yes, it's going to take some buyers out of the marketplace, but the rate hike, I think would still have to go up two or three more times drastically in order to really make people question their current mortgage situation. A lot of people are wondering, should I go fix? Should I go fix? Oh my gosh, the rates are going up. The advice that we're getting from a lot of the mortgage lenders that we're talking to that are making the decisions for their own property are stay variable. Now, this doesn't mean that you should. You should obviously talk to your mortgage expert because your situation is different than everybody else's. But that's a great example of when rates are going up and you feel emotional of like, I got to go fix right now because I read the news. You got to take a step back and just be a little bit more thoughtful. Like what's the net effective impact on your income and your mortgage? And what does that refinance mean? If you refinance, are you going to be locked in? You have to break that fee if you have to move. It's all about strategy. Bring in your professional team. Have a conversation with them about what they're seeing in the market. Um, I think the rate hikes are going to cause the next couple months to be pretty frothy for some areas and markets where buyers do want to make a move because maybe they want to jump in before the June hike. So I think that could have a really big impact on where things go in the next couple months. The June increase that the government is talking about already, um, that is poised to hit June one, another half point increase. Again, it will make a difference on some people's buying powers, but I don't think enough from the lack of the supply to have a massive impact on the market. The liberal housing plan changes. I'm going to go over four points super quick for you. Auctions, limiting foreign investors, savings accounts, and inflation as a whole. Um, you know, inflation as a whole, I'll do this in reverse. It seems to be impacting a spring deceleration. It seems to be a buzzword I'm hearing in the news and everywhere out there. But yeah, inflation's real, right? It's food, it's energy, it's housing. But understand that we live in a country that is a lot more solvent of a financial institution than a lot of other countries did. 
So people are finding ways to become more efficient. How much does the housing matter to you? How much does the vehicle and the food matter to you? Have you thought about growing your own food? There's ways that we're looking at refining reoccurring revenue streams and seeing like, are we spending money in the right places or are we spending money in places that we can help build our community again together? I think inflation could be an opportunity if you look at it the right way, um, rather than just spending for the sake of spending, putting your money in the right places makes a whole lot of sense. Opportunity if you are investing in your housing to improve the value of your house. So if you're not going to refinance quite yet and you want to do a significant improvement like a backyard renovation, add a pool or something like that, you could potentially make money on that if you do it the right way. and You know what the after renovated value of your property is. Contact your realtor for an ARV. We can actually provide that at no cost just so you have an idea of if it's worth doing the renovation or not. Your agent is one of your biggest assets. Just call them. They like talking to people nonstop. Clearly I do the tax free or the tax free savings account to help with you with your down payment. My opinion, I think it was up to about $40,000 last I read it. Um, you were limited to a certain amount of contribution per year. If you divide that by 20% down payment, you're looking at, you know, a $200,000 house, which you can't really buy in this market. Currently, if you do a 5% down payment, it's about an $800,000 house. There's RSPs and other tax free savings accounts plans available for first time home purchasers as well too. It's looking to ease some of the pressure, maybe it makes a little bit of difference. You'll still be seeing limiting foreign investors. I do not think that's going to have even remotely the impact the government is trying to pretend that it's going to have a lot of foreign investors are investing through actual local REITs in Canada. So I don't know that necessarily they'll ever even be able to track who the investors are. If the actual name on title of the people that are investing are local people, again, None of my clients, but it is something that is going to be looked at. Um, we did do some statistics with Jazz and some people that work in markets where you think there's a lot of foreign investors, a tiny amount of the deals that are actually translating are foreign investors. So I think that's more of a headline piece. Jazz brought up a great point. He's like, you know, people will drive by a new build site and see all these purchasers and hear different languages, Greek, Sikh, you know, all these different Arabic languages and say, oh my gosh, look at all these foreign investors. Meanwhile, these people are local, they're Canadian citizens that live in Canada. So again, I think a little bit more emotional button pressing from the government side of things there. Auctions, we're deep in conversations about the auction plans. Now suffice it to say, it's not going to take the real estate agent out of the transaction. It's going to be an optional thing. From our discussions with a lot of people, they're very concerned that it's actually going to increase the housing prices because if people can see what the other buyers are going to pay and they just got to go a little bit over than that. I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden you see prices go up because of auctions. If we could openly discuss the prices that people are willing to pay, you may have people paying way more than they would have had they not seen that price. The other thing is there's like a natural selection process that happens when it comes to bidding on a house. What you'll typically see is, you know, most deals, all the offers, even if you have like eight or 10 of them are going to be around the same number. You'll have a couple at the bottom, you know, a couple at the top and the top offers, you know, you may have a couple outliers. It's more rare than not that you'll see those offers that are just so far off the top offer that you're like, I can't believe they're paying that price. But when you get those offers, there's an inherent risk with that offer. Cause you'll have two types of agents. You'll have one type of agent that qualifies their buyer. They know they're a real cash buyer. They're not getting financing. You have another agent. I like to call him uncle Jimmy has no idea what's going on. Just does an offer with no financing. That offer with no financing doesn't get financed because the bank doesn't appraise it. They can't close. And that deal never closes if it goes anywhere. That happens all the time. So a lot of those properties that never actually end up closing, that are a lot of these discussion points. Cause in Canada, we disclose sale price before we close, which is crazy are one of the reasons why we're talking about this right now and auctions as being an option for sellers are going to be very, very curious to see how they try and implement it. I think if anything, auctions will make people like ourselves more valuable because our value is not directly tied to just giving you data and saying, this is the price or this is the price and having no tangible impact on it. Fun fact, being in real estate this day and age means you need to be a consultant. You need to be a marketer. You need to be relationship driven and you need to be a connector. People call us because they want access to our platform, our network, our deal flow, what we can do over and beyond the MLS. Another huge caveat is if you're using apps on MLS or websites to give you sole data, be very cautious about the data that that's pumping out to you. I did a little bit of a insight into a market report that was given out on one of their sites that was about 75% off in terms of the data that it was feeding you, right? So take everything with a grain of salt, get an amazing community of people around you. We would love you to be part of our community. 
This is the channel where people like you are calling us every single day to find out where they want to live in Southwestern Ontario, getting educated on our real estate, investing, and all things community. Appreciate your time. As always, I'm your host, Justin Conical. You can connect with me below or any of the amazing Prime team members. We'll catch you on the next market update. And if you get the newsletter, please let me know what your favorite part is. We will do a draw next month for the most engaged community members, anybody that does reply. So hope to see your name there and we'll catch you next time.